Hey guys, what's up? Disney Nuts here. How you guys doing? Today I'm going to show you how I shot this. Pretty cool, right? Okay, first I want to say thank you for watching these videos. I appreciate all the comments that you guys have written to me saying how these videos have helped you. Now for 2019, I am going to dig a little deeper and go into some pretty more uh, deep in subjects regarding photography. So if this is the first time watching any of my videos, make sure you go back and check out the videos that I did during 2018, which start from all the bases. But this year, 2019, we're gonna dig in a little deeper, which is why we're gonna go ahead and talk about bracketing. Now, if you've tried shooting this type of stuff where you have neon signs in the streets of Hollywood Studios, you know that's pretty tricky because sometimes if you try to focus on what is the words of the sign, it'll come out fine, but then the building uh, will be underexposed, or if you try to focus on the building, your sign will be overexposed, which is really white and weird. And this is what we're gonna talk about today, which is called bracketing. Bracketing is the process where we take more than one photo and combine them into one. Now, don't worry, I know it sounds a little bit complicated and a lot of stuff to take, uh, but don't worry, we're gonna take a couple shots, we're gonna head over to Hollywood Studios, and I'm gonna walk through all the process, and we're gonna look at every single photo, as how each photo makes that one final cool shot. Um, we're gonna be jumping in and out, so you'll see that sometimes you're gonna be at Hollywood Studios, sometimes I'll be here, because Hollywood Studios today, it was December 28th, was just jam-packed, and to be honest, I just couldn't find a spot without people jumping in the camera and doing other stuff, so hope you don't mind, so we'll be jumping in and out of the scenes from here and over there. But anyway, without further ado, let's head over to Hollywood Studios. Okay, like I mentioned before, we're going to be taking multiple exposures. And the good thing is that if you have actually a DSLR, pretty recent new DSLR, it already has this feature built in, which is called AEB, Automatic Exposure Bracketing. Now, I will show you how to do it on a Canon camera, which is what I have. And then right after that, I'm going to show you how to do it manually in case you do not have a Canon camera. Now, when we're talking about multiple exposures for this exercise, we're only going to be taking three shots because we want to, just to do it as basic possible, we want to take one underexposed, one normal and one overexposed and then we're going to combine those three photos of course you can take a bunch of them you can take five seven even more and merge them and hopefully get something that you like but for this uh, video and this exercise we're just going to be doing three okay so let's go ahead and talk about the camera settings now on uh, for the mode you can use any mode that you want except obviously automatic like for example in this case we're just going to go with uh, aperture priority which is the one that i like the best and on the Canon cameras, it's really easy to activate the AEB feature, which is the one for um, to do the automatic uh, exposure. Now, for example, what I'm going to do is that you actually just have to come here to your exposure indicator. I'm going to tap it, and you'll see it's going to bring up a screen. And if I then now with the dial here on the on the top, I just have to move it to the right, and you're going to see these lines break out to the side. And what that means is that the camera is going to take three shots. One which is where uh, the one on the left which is underexposed and then the second one is going to be the one in the middle and finally the third one which is going to be the one that is overexposed okay let's say that your camera does not have the feature of automatic bracketing what we're going to do we're going to actually do it manually and for this we do need to put the camera in some type of manual mode or where you can lock down the settings and then depending on what setting we do for one of the three components, in this case, the shutter, uh, we can adjust what is going to uh, do that effect of being underexposed or overexposed. For example, I'm gonna go ahead and put my camera on manual. Again, this is doing it if your camera does not have the automatic um, exposure bracketing. And I am gonna lock down my settings. For example, here, let's say I'm gonna put my uh, F, um, ISO, let's lock it down to, let's lock it down to 800. And let's leave the f-stop to f4 and if I do a test shot you're going to see the exposure indicator on the bottom is overexposed which is this here so we're going to bring it down and there we go so now you'll see that the exposure indicator is right in the middle and we can go ahead and take one shot 
And now, since I want to do three shots, I want to go underexposed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep on rolling the dial a little more. And by pressing my shutter speed halfway, it shows me where the exposure is right now. So you can see now it is underexposed. So I'm going to go ahead and take that shot. And now the next one is I'm going to do is overexposed. So I'm going to roll the shutter to the other way. So it is overexposed. And there we go. Now again, it doesn't need to be exactly on those numbers, but at least something really close to what you did from the other side, the underexposed. So you more or less get balanced photos all, all the way through. So I'm going to take the shot. Okay, so let me show you how the three shots looks. Here's the underexposed one. Here's the regular exposed one. And here's the one that is overexposed. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about some tips doing these types of shots. First, bring a tripod with you or have somewhere where you can put the camera where it does not move. Remember, since we're merging the photos, which is the last step that we're going to be doing, we need to make sure that there's not a lot of movement between them because what's going to happen is that the software is not going to be able to identify and we're going to have a really messed up photo. Make sure you have something where you can keep the camera as still as possible. Second tip, make sure what you're shooting is not moving or is not going to move. When you're doing these types of shots, since you're doing multiple exposures at different times, you cannot do something where you're shooting the people on the street because what's going to happen, you're going to get ghosts of people moving and it's going to look weird. For example, like this. Tip number three, keep it constant if you're doing manual bracketing. Now we saw the process using the Canon camera where it does automatically the three shots uh, easy for us. But if you're doing this manually, you need to make sure that certain things remain constant. For example, the f-stop as well as the ISO. Just only play with the shutter speed to move that exposure indicator to the left, which is underexposed, and to the right when you take your three shots. Four, don't overdo it. For example, in my case, I only take three shots. If you see that your camera can do five and seven, go ahead and try it once, but I have found for my preference, three shots is more than enough. Use RAW instead of JPEG. Now, this is something that I bring up all the time. RAW brings out so much information of the whole photo. Even though they're large in size and you have to modify every single RAW file, when it comes to bracketing, trust me, you want to be able to bring out the most information from the photo that the sensor has captured. So make sure you use RAW in these types of photos. And the final tip is, don't worry if you do not use all the photos. Sometimes you'll see that if you take three shots, maybe the, the, the one that is overexposed is a little too bright. You can use two photos if you want to. There's nothing wrong with that. So experiment and try with different things. Again, all the stuff that I'm showing in these videos are stuff that I do as a base. Feel free to vary it from that and put in your little spin to it, which is what makes your photos yours. Okay, we're coming up on the spot, which is actually right here to the right, which is Legends of Hollywood. And this is actually a great spot to practice because you got everything going on here. For example, you got the sign, which is really bright. And you got the building in the back, which will come out obviously pretty dark because the camera's going to try to focus on the center part. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our shots. Here is the first one. You can see the sign in the middle is properly exposed, but you cannot see the entrance or the top of what the building is. If I move into the next one, which is the one that's normal, you can see the camera tried to do its best to put everything in a proper exposure. So it included the top part and the sign. But you'll see that some of the details of the sign are overexposed. So that's something that we're going to uh, hopefully fix with the third shot. And here is the third shot. So you can see how the building shows up and everything, but the sign comes out still a little bit overexposed. So we're gonna take these three shots and put them into the computer. And here the camera is actually doing pretty good in compensating and balancing everything out. But when we take a photo and trying to focus on the three girls on the top, here how it's gonna look. So here we're going to go ahead and take those three shots that I was telling you about. And again, we're going to take three shots only, one underexposed, one normal, and one overexposed, and then we're going to combine them. Here are the shots. Okay, now that we got our three photos, what do we do? Well, that is where the last step of this bracketing comes into play. And this is where the software that we're going to have combines them. Now for this exercise and for the simplicity of this video, we're going to be using the HDR feature, which is located at Adobe Lightroom. 
There are tons of other software out there which are really good and they also provide different results. So feel free to experiment and try with different other ones. Some will give different results and some have different effects. So, but that's what makes the Disney Photography fun because we experiment with different programs and different things and you'll get different results. Okay, so with that said, we're gonna go ahead and open up Lightroom and we're gonna edit at least one of the shots so you can see how we combine them and what's the result we get in Lightroom. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom and here are the three images that we took. There's one, two, and three. And this is the darkest one, the medium one, uh, normal, if you want to call it, and the one that is overexposed. So what we're going to do, we're going to select all three images. We can do it with the shift or the control key. And then over any of the images or even on top of this image, we could do right click and do photo merge. And we're going to hit the option of HDR. Now this process here may take a little bit depending on your computer. Um, here it is quick because I actually already did it previously and it looks like it already has it cached. There's some options here that I leave on as a default. For example, auto align, I leave it on, which will automatically, if there's anything that's just a teeny bit off, it will um, align them correctly. If for any reason, when you took your photos and you did not use a tripod and even with the auto align on, it does not work, then sadly, you're gonna have to go back and take them again, which is why I urge people always to use a tripod. And like you saw in my photo, um, you can use any type of tripod. For example, you don't need to take the big tripod to do stuff like this. For example, this shot is actually sitting down on a table with a six inch tripod shooting towards, uh, towards the entrance. And you can even see one of the chairs here that I forgot to move to the side. Okay, so and then after that, um, we're gonna leave auto settings, which is fine. And, and we can always go back once we hit the merge button, we can go back and edit, uh, for, tweak the settings. Here is we wanna do the dehosting. Um, the photos and I usually pick high and what that will do it'll take off like a the high end of the photo like it'll just um, cut some of that fuzz that the, usually comes in when you merge these types of photos so again very important do not touch the photos when you bring them in just uh, do the HDR process first and then go back and edit because that way uh, you're getting a clean shot of the images and if you try to adjust stuff like color and stuff like that what's gonna happen it's gonna look oversaturated and it just basically, uh, for me, ruins the process. So I usually do all the editing on the final photo instead of on the individual ones. Okay, we go and hit merge and we let this run. Okay, so here is the image coming back from Lightroom. It's merged the three files and you'll see that it actually created a new file under our catalog. And basically now is where we go and we tweak the stuff here. But you can see right off of the bat, it looks great because we got the sign here and looks perfectly exposed as well as we can see the building in the back and the entrance and everything. Of course, there's gonna be some minor tweaks that we need to do to it to sort of like balance it out, uh, but that is fine. So what we're gonna do, let's just go ahead and do some quick edits here. And um, a thing that I usually see when you do some types of HDR when it's stuff like this is that you'll sometimes get like a bluish tones on some of this white stuff and that is actually pretty easy to correct. In this case, since it's a white sign with black letters, what we're going to actually do is turn on saturation, but we're going to pull it all the way to minus 100. And then using our brush, we're going to put up you know, a good 60% and turning the auto mask off. I'm just going to basically paint right over it and I'm going to take out the color. And what's going to happen is that you're going to see that it's going to now become white and black on the letters. Now again, people say, oh yeah, but you're taking out some of the vibrance of it. but Remember that nobody has seen the original photo. So if I show you this photo right now and you haven't seen the previous one, you're not going to know that there was like a bluish tone to it. So again, when you're editing your photos, don't worry about how it looks because nobody has seen the original except you. And I always tell everybody that because they always worry that if they add something to it, it's going to look weird. Well, how can it look weird if nobody's seen the original one? So have fun with it, guys. Trust me. That's, that's how I keep all this stuff fun and interesting because it's always fun to do something different when... Uh, we've seen certain images over and over and over and if you add your little t uh, tweaks to it and colors and stuff like that it will makes it fun and what's make people coming back to your account now again here i could add a, a little bit more for example the photo looks a little bland uh, to be honest with you so i can go ahead and add some vibrance in it and you know pop a little bit the colors there we go you know now the purple's coming out looks a little cooler and um and that's it really i don't need to do anything else if you want you can go ahead and adjust some of this other stuff down here but I don't think I need to. I think it looks pretty pretty cool as it is. And there you go, guys. That's it. Now, uh, this is this shot. Let me show you a couple of other shots where I've used this technique of doing the bracketing. And again, all the shots I'm going to show you now, they're only done with three images. Some may be with two. Some may be with, uh, with the full three. But here are a couple of those images.
Sid here from Hollywood Studios. Hopefully these tips and tricks of how to do bracketing HDR photos you can apply on your next trip. Until then guys, this is Disney Nuts signing out. Take care and stay awesome.